Hello again and welcome back. Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about sharpening for output. If you'll remember, back in Adobe Camera Raw we did a very mild amount of sharpening and we were basically trying to remove a bit of softness that results from the digital capture. Now we're going to be talking about sharpening an image for final output. The two very common types of output that we might be preparing an image for would be to create a photograph. So we might be sharpening it in advance of printing a photograph. The other thing we might be doing is sending an image off to the internet for email or posting to a website. And now we're going to also talk about the sharpening, how we sharpen for that. These procedures that I'm going to show you are simply my, my procedures, my workflow. It doesn't make them right. It doesn't make them wrong. There are gobs of ways to sharpen images, and these are just simply the, the procedures that I have fallen into the habit of using. We will be using this photograph here of Bandon Beach on the Oregon coast in this, uh, in this lesson. And now let's get started. Let's first show you the way that I sharpen when I'm resizing for the internet. And this is extremely simple. When we actually resize the image, we come up here to Image, run down to image size. When we're resizing the image and we're preparing it for the internet, for email, posting to website, we're going to be making this master file much, much smaller. So we're going to be using this bicubic sharper algorithm. It's the best one for reduction. And actually, it does sharpen while it's making the image smaller. And that is all of the sharpening I like when I'm getting something ready for the internet or for emailing to a friend. And that's it. So it's very simple. When you're preparing an image for the internet, this is the all the sharpening I do right here built into this algorithm when I'm resizing it. All right, let's clear this and run through our discussion of how we prepare an image, a master file. We're working with a master file here. How we prepare a master file for printing. Always start with your master file. If you're using a file that's already been resized and sharpened, and now you're resizing and sharpening it again, you're going to start to introduce some really weird effects. So you always want to start with your master file. OK, so now we're preparing this image for a print. The very first thing we want to do would be to flatten the image. If we take a real quick look here at our layers, we notice we have a luminosity mask which means we may have an alpha channel back here. We'll click on the channel tab and sure enough we do. Let's go ahead and throw that away. We do not need that. We'll click back here on the layers tab and then we'll come up here and flatten. Oops, layer down to flatten and click flatten image. The next thing we'll do is resize it. Let's come up here to image run down to image size and click on it. We're going to, let's say, make this a 16 by 24. 16. And we'll choose bicubic smoother, best for enlargement. Click OK. Now we'll change the mode to 8-bit. So come down image mode over to 8-bit channel. And finally, we'll go ahead and change the profile. My printer doesn't want to see the images in the Pro Photo RGB color space, so we'll go ahead and change that to the Adobe RGB 1998 right up here. We'll click OK. And now we'll start our procedure for sharpening. First thing I do is make a copy of the background. Then we change the blend mode to something called luminosity. Since luminosity does not have any colors, we can avoid skewing any colors that may be present in the image. So luminosity is a good choice here. Next, I usually click on print size and then position something in the view here that I can see and like. And I usually scroll in just a little bit further with the scroll wheel. Now we choose something that's not intuitive at all. We choose the unsharp mask. So we'll click on filter, run down here to sharpen. 
down over and down to the unsharp mask. Click on that and we'll get this dialog box to pop up. We'll talk briefly about this dialog box. This little box that you see here, you can choose what's inside of it by wherever you click this little box out here in the image. So let's just click right there. We can click right there. Let's put it right there. Oh, let's put it right here for right now. You can change how you're viewing at 100 or 200 percent. I find 100 to be just fine, which means we're viewing at pixel level. The amount slider down here controls the overall amount of sharpening, and it can vary anywhere from zero up to 500. How much you actually have to apply will vary depending upon your pixels per inch. Usually, I have all of my images prepared for printing at 300 pixels per inch and the settings I'm going to show you here are based upon that. If you change your pixels per inch your settings will definitely be different and you'll have to adjust the sliders to see what you like. My typical starting place is about 300 here for amount so we'll type in 300. The next thing we run across here is the radius and that controls the width of pixels along an edge that will be affected. Typically one or something just a little smaller is good. With landscape photographs we typically don't run any higher than one, although on rare occasions you may. Again, you're going to be adjusting these sliders to your own personal taste. The next thing we run across here is this little slider called threshold. And threshold controls in tonal values between 0 and 255 how far apart adjacent pixels must be before being affected. So let's look at the sky in our minds here. Our sky isn't very far apart. So if we do sharpening and we're down here really low, let's say at zero, then we're going to be sharpening very small variations in our sky. And we may not look like that look. It may appear grainier. We can run our threshold off to the right and pick up some number here so that we're not sharpening at such small increments and our sky doesn't pick up this kind of a grainy look. I typically find that a threshold of three or four works really well. Again, you're going to adjust each image individually, but as a starting point I like this three or four range. What you really want to avoid is you want to sharpen, but you want to avoid something called halos. Let's just show you real quickly what a halo is. This is a halo. This is a crazy looking effect. You want to avoid getting this halo. So if you're seeing these halos in your image, you've over sharpened. So for this image, I think the amount at about 300 would be fine. I'll take the radius back down to 1, and I'm going to put the threshold at 3. And this would be a real nice amount of sharpening for this particular image. You can now click OK and the sharpening has been applied to this background copy and now I can toggle on and off the background copy to see if I really like the effect. I look at different portions of it to see what I think. Once I confirm that I like it, I can flatten the image, layer, flatten image, and then save this off as a print file. And typically I might save this off file, come down to save as. I might save this off with the size that I created it. So it would be 16 by 24. And again, not to confuse things later on, I'll remove this master. Double check to make sure everything looks okay here and click save. That is how I perform sharpening for printing. And earlier, we showed you how to perform sharpening for the Internet. See you next time.